So with a gradated wash, it's like doing a flat wash, except it, you are blending two colors together to create almost an ombre effect, okay? So you might find that you'll use this in the background uh, of the sky or even at the base of a lake. So we're doing a wash with one color, a wash with a second color, and kind of blending them really quickly together to get a nice smooth transition from one to the other. I yesterday did this and I found that our stippling ran up into it. And today I did the exact same thing. I accidentally went a little crazy with my stippling square and now I've got limited room for my graded wash, gradated wash, but I'm gonna see what I could fit in here. If you run out of room up here, you can always flip your page around and do your gradated wash on the background. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work with, I'm going to try to do a blue wash and fade it into a yellow, almost like we're painting a sunset. So I'll take a little bit of blue. Water it down and I'm going to take a little bit of a yellow. You could do any two colors. Again, yesterday we did a violet and a blue and faded them together. Okay, and again, the more water you add to your color, the lighter your wash. The less water you add to your color, the darker your wash. So I might actually use two different brushes. So I've got them ready to go. All right, so at the top, I'm gonna go in and do a little bit of a blue. My wet wash. And at the bottom, I'm gonna go in with a yellow wash. I want to smudge my tree here, but I think it's, and what you want to do is you want to kind of like blend the two while they're still wet in between. And have them kind of blur together. And then transition into the opposite color. So just excuse my tree, my little tree's in the way. Okay, but you wanna kind of play around with blending two colors together while they're wet. So you're doing one color on the top, a wash of one color on the top, a wash of a second color on the bottom, and while they're still wet, kind of blurring them together to create a transition from one to the other in the center. And when it dries, it looks better, obviously. And again, here's our example from yesterday. We did a violet melting into a blue. Dated wash or any wash would probably be your base step when you're creating a landscape and then you kind of do other details on top. I kind of messed up my tree here so I'm just going to fix it up with some wet on dry.
So again, a lot of you guys are, are saying Miss Mine doesn't look exactly like yours. This activity is more for you than it is for me. I want to just see evidence that you've taken a sheet of watercolor paper and really played around with your brush, with different colors of paint, with different amounts of water or paint. Okay, trying out flat wash, tonal values, wet on wet, wet on dry, dry paint on a wet surface, dry paint on a dry surface, stippling, and a gradated wash, kind of going from one color to another. Gradated wash, you'll, you'll probably find that if you're doing a lot of your skies, uh, oftentimes if you're doing a sunset or a sunrise, your sky might, again, change in color as it comes closer to the horizon line, right? So this is, gradated wash is something you might use for your sky to get that nice transition. Just remember, you have to work with it quickly. Both of your colors have to stay wet if you wanna blend them together. Okay, and if you find that you're having trouble with getting a nice consistent color on your paper because it's drying too quickly, something that you can do is dampen your paper. Remember the first step that we did with wet on wet? We just took some water and we dampened our background and then we did a wash on top and that just makes the, the, the background wash a little bit more uh, flexible in terms of the amount of time that you have to move it around okay so that's that so I want you guys to just take a picture of your uh, you know techniques sheet here just playing around with a bunch of different techniques just show me some evidence that you've actually explored your paints before starting your painting and like I said after this if you want to grab another sheet to continue to practice on maybe now look at your reference photo and see well which one of these am I probably going to use for different parts and practice practice on a separate sheet whether it's mixing colors that you might need to create for your painting or attempting you know to actually do a tree or to do a little bit of a detail on top of a background wash you can continue to practice because your pad has more than enough paper okay you're only going to be using one sheet for your final painting but that's that all right so take a picture of your watercolor techniques make sure that they are labeled if you want to go over your labeling with uh your fine liner just to make it more obvious you can and make sure that if you are untaping this, that you're being really gentle with your tape. You don't want to rip it off really fast. Otherwise, you might find that it will tear, right? So you just want to be very gentle. while removing it and you'll have a nice clean edge If you did it this exercise without taping down your watercolor paper, you might find that the paper is a little bit buckled and bent right now. But um, when it's dry, you can just put it underneath something heavy to flatten it out. Okay, but I do like taping it again because it gives it gives you that nice clean edge. All right, there we go.